I'm Jim, and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop, and today I'm going to answer a couple of emails I got on what is the difference between a solid clutch and a soft start clutch. It's kind of hard to explain that on an email or over the phone, so I'm going to show you the difference and explain how they work. I have a question for you. I kind of thought about putting this pegboard at the end of my bench to hang up all the tools that I use all the time. I don't know if it's going to be a good idea or if it's going to be in a way. Let me know what you think. Now, the clutches. This is a solid clutch. It's out of the older machines, typically the old Comets. And machines in the early 70s, I think, had them. And all they consist of is the standard clutch disc. And this one has the liner in it. But with this style of a clutch, you don't need that liner. So if you have an older machine and all it has is this bolted on to the side of the chain case, you can buy the cheaper ones without the liner. They just go on there and you turn it until all five of these holes line up. And you typically you only need three bolts. They do use a carriage bolt. It looks like about three quarters of an inch long. And that goes through from the inside out. That gives you clearance for the brake to go around in here. Then, the problem with these were kids, kids were popping wheelies with dad's lawnmower. And kids were getting hurt. And dad's lawnmower was ended up with busted chains, either in the chain case or the differential. They weren't really made for that. This is a soft start clutch. I'm just going to pinch this and hold it together because I took the four nuts off. A lot of people say, well, this clutch slips. I don't think it's working. It's supposed to do that. And it's supposed to wiggle around. That's typical. You take the four nuts off and you have this cover plate. Underneath that, you have this thrust washer that actually does absolutely nothing outside of reducing the chatter or rattling noise. That's all I can figure it does. This is a standard clutch disc, and it has the liner in it. Now, if you buy one of these clutch discs without the liner, your machine is not going to go well at all, or it may not even move, period, because you're trying to grip on a steel surface on another steel surface, and it's just going to slip. How these are intended to use is when you let your clutch out, no matter if you do it slow or fast, this is going to swing into your drive disc and it's going to get pinched between your drive disc and your clutch disc assembly. And this is going to slowly start turning, which is going to turn this in the chain case and you make your machine move. Now if your machine all of, a, all of a sudden stops moving or uh, it's moving slow, won't climb a hill, watch video number 70 and tighten the yoke spring. That is what pulls this into the drive disc. Now this one has been drilled most of them will not be drilled. This one I drilled a while ago to bolt the clutch disc solid to the assembly. And you can see the back of these. You have to chamfer them. And you cannot use standard bolts unless you take that brake out of here. You have to use a flathead bolt and you have to chamfer them deep enough so the top of the bolt is completely flush, or your brake is gonna catch on them bolt heads. 
that would be a last resort. I, I don't think I would do that until you've eliminated all the other issues that causes drive problems, like a weak or wrong adjusted yoke spring. Your yoke, if it has dimples or dents or worn spot, where the, I call it the tail on the chain case slides in that slot on your yoke, if you've got a bunch of dimples where you're always driving in like second or third gear, that's not gonna pull your chain case in tight. You either have to weld them up and file them down or just buy a new yoke. Now, some of the machines, the yokes are very inexpensive. They're like $23. The older ones can get up as much as $150. Them you wanna repair. Um, another thing you wanna check is the little nylon bushings that the yoke pivots on. Them I've seen have slots wore right through them, allowing the yoke to slide and come out of adjustment. Uh, another point you wanna check is the bushings in your fenders. If them get worn, the axle will drop down, or I should say go up higher, and that throws the alignment off on everything. If your spreader bar is bent, straighten it or replace it. I make them, you can make them out of a piece of threaded rod, but if that bar gets bent, what it actually does is your two fenders with your bearings or bushings will flay in, which throws everything out of alignment and will wear your bushings out even faster. Keep your eye on that. Oh gosh, there's, there's quite a few things. I have video that explains all the points you want to check to see what your alignment or your problem could be on your clutch disc. But before I would bolt it solid, I would go through and check all the other points that could be causing your issues. <clears throat> I had a couple people get a hold of me. I'm driving across my yard mowing and it just quits. It won't go forward or backwards. Engine's running fine. The machine won't move, no matter what gear I put it in. Pull your hub. Don't tear your machine apart and start looking for problems. Take your hub caps off. There is a bolt on each side of the machine going through your wheel flange and your axle. If that bolt breaks or just falls out, your machine will stop and will not move. The way the differentials work is both tires will turn at the same speed as long as you're going straight. When you start turning a corner, the outside tire will turn faster and your inside tire will stop turning. Well, when one of them bolts break or falls out, your differential will think you're turning a corner and it will send all the power to the side that the bolt broke and the axle will just spin inside of the uh, wheel flange. I had one guy actually got a hold of me and said, I'm driving across my yard and my tire fell off. The bolt broke. How it kept moving after that bolt broke it must have been rusted on and it couldn't spin freely until it worked its way off and just fell off. <laughs> Simple things you want to check before you start tearing your machine all apart. I did have one guy got a hold of me. He says, I've took the chain case apart, the differential apart. Nothing's wrong with this thing. I don't know how he missed that bolt being broke when he tore his machine apart but it was easy to do apparently. So just a small explanation of the two clutches. <coughs> you can't buy these anymore. Well, wait a minute. I think if you go on uh, partstree.com with an old model number, you may be able to still get these. And if you really wanna put one on, 
that's what I would do. It would be the easiest way instead of drilling it and getting the heads sunk in. Just uh, pick one of these up. I'm not sure how much they are. I got uh, one viewer, whenever he rebuilds a machine, he sticks one of these on it. He just eliminates the clutch issue. <coughs> but it is dangerous. <laughs> they will pop a wheelie. If you got baggers on there that are full of, like my yard, sand and stones and sticks, that front end comes up really easy, even with my soft start clutch. Going out in the woods to dump, there's a couple hills I have to go up. Sometimes I find myself standing up and leaning over the handlebars to get enough weight on the front tires so I can turn. So if you're having trouble, send me an email. Explain to me what you're doing. Pictures always help. And I will explain to you what to do to fix your problems. Until next time, work safe, have fun, and a little hint. I go on my phone to a program I have, to YouTube Studio, and it tells me on here that I have average viewing duration is five minutes. Well, when we're doing giveaways from now on, they're gonna be hid somewhere in that video or at the very end. So start watching the whole thing because I got a lot of stuff coming up to give away. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and I'll talk to you soon. So long.